Kira koutou te whanau, ngā mahi mahana, kia koutou. Love is not an option. Love is not an extra, not an add-on, and it's not a Hallmark card. Love is not an option. Love is the everything. It is who we are. It is what binds every person in this room together. Love is consciousness. It is our natural state of being. I understand this up here, and I know this physiologically in here. And as love is my natural state of being as a human, so too is it yours. And as it is ours, so too is love the natural state of being for the kids that I work with. And it is this understanding that sits at the core of my work. My work is totally awesome. I have a job that is less like a job and more like just an extension of who I choose to be within this universe. After many years in and around the classroom, I founded Ngā Rangatahi Toa Creative Arts Initiative in 2009. I'm now the creative director of this transformational organisation that taps in to the potential and creativity of some of the most marginalised youth in our country. We work out exactly what it is that is going to engage that kid, and we team them up with some of the top creative talent that New Zealand has to offer. They might paint a mural, lay down a track, or even write a screenplay. Whatever it is that's going to tune in that kid, we make it happen. We work with some of the 3,500 alternative education rangatahi, or young people, in New Zealand who are in alternative education. That's the kids who have been excluded from two or more schools, or on continual suspension where no other school will take them. We also work with some of the 20... 8,800 Wainit youth between the ages of 15 and 19 in New Zealand. Wainit. That means youth and no education, employment or training. That means right now as we sit here, there's almost 10% of 15 to 19-year-olds in New Zealand, and that does include those of compulsory school age who are not in school, not in alternative education, don't have a job and are not moving towards anything. That is an age in your life where you should be doing everything, not nothing. So we work with these phenomenal young people. We find out what is going to tune them in. We use creativity to unlock their potential. Now, Ngā Rangatahi Toa is a program that is a wraparound program with, handily enough, two arms. Our first arm is that creative arts arm, so we use our innovative arts-based practice to tap in that, into that potential and let the kids become who they were born to be. Our other arm is our youth development arm, so as our kids are on their creative journey, they and their whānau, their family, work together with our youth development managers, supported through home visits, leadership programs and an individualised transition plan. We are there for our kids, no matter what happens, someone has got their back. We make a commitment to them, not to do everything for them, but to walk with them as they journey into adulthood. Now, a pretty important part of this journey is to move out of that wide neck group. At its core, educational re-engagement is not about literacy and numeracy. It is about plugging our kids back into the main frame of love so they can understand the interconnectedness and be connected to everything. It is from this point that the journey to potential can begin. To unlock that potential, we come with an open heart. We affirm love as their natural state of being, and we recognise ourselves in them. And when I say we recognise ourselves in them, that is actually our definition of love, to recognise yourself in another. And by that, I don't actually just mean having had similar experiences as someone, as in that kid reminds me of who I was when I was young. When I say that love means to recognise yourself in another, I mean understanding that that kid is you. And you are that kid. You are both love, the energy that binds all of us together.
Neville comes from a chaotic home. This is a 12-foot-tall mural that he did with us, mentored by DLT. His home has a lot of love in it, but there's a lot of siblings, solo mum, no job, not much money. And you know what? Not a huge amount of that exterior stuff has changed in the 18 months we've worked with Neville, but holy moly, Neville has grown into himself, and so too has his Fano. I can remember the first time I met Neville. I was in South Auckland to meet a 16-year-old kid who'd been kicked out of school, who was kind of running riot with his homies, stealing cars, breaking and entering, generally actions that showed a whole lot of anger and a whole-hearted disdain for others. He was one of those kids who actions systematically take the neighbour out of neighbourhood. So he's running riot with his homies in his hood, and actually, by his own admission, was on a fast track to prison. I met Neville at his alternative education programme in an industrial building in Mangere. We sat in that broken classroom, and I told him a little bit about what it is that we do differently. He was listening, but his answers were short, and his phone was absorbing quite a lot of his attention. Studied indifference, but I only ever see potential and I only ever project love. Now, when Neville came to us and started doing projects with us, he was like all of our kids are when they start, put up, eyes unsure, checking everything new out, arms folded, head down, answers monosyllabic and pained. Our kids have internalised their experience, so they present themselves how they have been treated. When they come to us, what that can look like is something like a lineup of little gangsters. Actually, some of those guys, not so little. But when I tell people that it takes two and a half days for that lineup to manifest as something else entirely to become their true selves, people don't believe me. I guess it was actually even a couple of projects for me that it took. To, I really understood and believed the magic of what I was seeing because it does happen. After two and a half days of internalizing love as their natural state of being, this is how they begin to present themselves open, laughing, connecting. They're kids, right? So kids respond to their environment, particularly if they're reverting to their natural state of being. Neville now is a leader. He projects love, kindness, compassion. He recognizes himself in another. As I said, he still does face the challenges of day-to-day -day poverty, but he has really grown into himself and he has brought so much joy to his own and his whanau's existence. He has exhibited in two art galleries. He has written a hip-hop track with the godfather of New Zealand hip-hop. He's recorded that. He's been awarded a leadership scholarship from Auckland Museum. He has brought his youngest sibling out of gang prospecting and into our programs. He scored his first job, and he is now studying music production. And he's here as well, so you will have loved that. <laughs> now, Neville is amazing, but his story is the story of our kids. They all face the day-to-day -day challenges of poverty, and things can get pretty full-on for them sometimes. But with us, our rangatahi have a 100% transition rate back into mainstream school into tertiary study or into employment. What we do works, and what we do is simple. The one thing that sets us apart from others is nothing more or nothing less than what sits at the core of what we do, and that is love. Like anything, though, this does take practice, because, as you know, we live in a world that isn't really geared up to being a love projector. Even I have stopped short at getting that on my business card. However, I do know what it is like to live a life in love. And once you know, you understand, and there is no other way to live. 
My one intention for all of you guys here today is to give this love projection a go, to make room for and to communicate with the consciousness in another human. No matter how unconscious, closed off, or even angry they may seem. That's what we do with our kids, but it's not actually about working with kids or teaching. That's my path, but it's really about your path. It's about embracing your humanity. It's about bringing your true self to whatever it is you do every day of your life. So to help, I'm going to share with you one of my daily practices for manifesting love. I call this the amnesic love buzz. Now, it's a way to be present in the moment, the beauty and potential of every moment to connect with the consciousness of another human, to know, to be, and eventually project love. Now, funnily enough, not 10 minutes ago, I actually fulfilled the amnesic love buzz practice for the day. I was backstage getting mic'd up to come out here. Now, this random interaction could so easily be reduced simply to the roles, the speaker and the sound technician. And of course, obviously, on one level, that's exactly what it is. But on another level, it is the consciousness of two humans coming into contact with each other. Now, to get to the real, to get past the roles, to get to consciousness, this is where you can use the amnesic love buzz. So I was backstage, getting mic'd up, coming to come out here, present in the amnesic love buzz, present in the moment of imagining that that person is the love of my life. They are who I love. They are my other self. But in the amnesic love buzz, unfortunately, John has amnesia, so he doesn't remember me. So I have to play it cool, because I don't want to freak him out. <laughs> I don't want to freak him out. But I am there, playing it cool, but in the words and actions, in something simple and random as getting mic'd up, there is boundless love. I become a love projector. I vibe out in every nuance of our interaction and energy. And believe me, other people do pick up on this because it speaks to their consciousness and it speaks to their natural state of being. It is a mean practice. I love it and it really, really informs my work. And I want you guys to give it a go because I want you to know what it feels like to live like love is the everything, to feel the interconnectedness of everyone in your life. I call this human experience, love. And to me, this is the everything. Love is not something you can add to your life. The life that is in me, that is in you, that is in the kids that I work with, that is in everyone, that love is life. Now, I recognize this now, but it wasn't until I took a leap of faith beyond the known and grew ngā rangatahi toa, that the veil began to lift for me. When I didn't have to fit myself in to the rules of what was supposed to work, where I didn't have to uphold literacy and numeracy as the holy grail of education, when love wasn't just when I had time and extra or a slice of sweetness to make the bitter pill of education go down. Ngā rangatahi toa has at its core love as do our kids. And even if we can't see it clearly every day, it is that core of love in our rangatahi that we teach. It is that core of love that we communicate with. It is that core of love that we connect with. And by connecting with that true, perfect self of love in another, we connect with it in ourselves. We recognize ourselves in each other. And it works and it feels so good to live your life like love is everything, like love is not an option. <laughs>